Not just the Russian Air Force, Ukraine's allies are also missing in action. The initial resolve has fizzled away. Now it's every country for itself. And that's what we saw on Thursday at the EU summit. It was typical European stuff. The Palace of Versailles in the background, a huge red carpet for the leaders, guards dressed in imperial style, all the pomp, none of the substance. Years later, we may look back at this meeting, the smiling faces, the grand optics, all of it will be a reminder, a reminder of Europe's betrayal. The summit where Ukraine was abandoned. Day one was all about the war. Should Ukraine be fast-tracked into the European Union? Should more sanctions be imposed on Russia? On both issues, the verdict was clear. Not happening. And it's not just the rejection, it's the manner of rejection. Listen to this. Except Eastern Germany in times of Helmut Kohl, nobody entered the European Union overnight. EU accession of Ukraine is something for the long term, if at all. It's not up to the Commission to, to assess uh, the uh, membership uh, application and then for the Council to take a view on this. But that will take months, maybe years. So. How encouraging was that? Ukraine is being ravaged by Russian airstrikes. Hundreds of citizens are already dead. Hospitals and schools are being flattened. And what does Europe say? Nobody enters the Union overnight. The Dutch Prime Minister went further. He says, if at all the accession happens, it will be in the long term. What good is that? Ukraine's future is uncertain right now. They may, there may not be a long term. An EU membership will not solve the uncertainty, but it would boost the morale. Nobody is asking for an overnight membership. But what about political commitment? A promise that Ukraine will become a member for sure. Latvia, for instance, made this demand. I think it's extremely important that we as the union could take this decision to, uh, uh, to have a very clear signal that we want Ukraine to join the union. We want Ukraine to be part of the family of democratic, freedom-loving nations. Most Baltic states said the same thing. They wanted an aggressive European policy. Just one problem. Nobody listened to them. The powerful members in Western Europe firmly shut the door. I'm talking about states like France and Germany. They think Ukraine would be a liability. These comments from Emmanuel Macron betray that sentiment. Can we begin the membership process with a country at war? I don't think so. Should we close the door and say never? That would be unfair. Can we forget about the balance in the region? We need to be cautious. What is Macron's cautious plan? To refer Ukraine to the European Commission, the Commission will give its assessment on whether membership is possible and how long would that take? Up to 18 months. This is not caution. This is not pragmatism. Let's call it what it is, a betrayal. Before Russia invaded, the West made all sorts of promises, military aid, unprecedented sanctions, but now they're making a U-turn on everything. Take NATO membership, for instance. In 2008, Western leaders promised to include Ukraine and Georgia. I have that joint declaration with me. Let me read it out from, from there. NATO welcomes Ukraine's and Georgia's Euro-Atlantic aspirations for membership in NATO. We agreed today that these countries will become members of NATO. That was 2008. 14 years later, the West is having second thoughts. The EU foreign policy chief says NATO's promise was a mistake. I'll quote from what he said. There are moments that we could have done better. There are things that we proposed and then could not implement. Such as the promise that Ukraine and Georgia would become part of NATO, I think it's a mistake to make promises you can't deliver. How convenient. Just look at what's happened to Ukraine since that promise. They lost Crimea. They lost parts of Donbass. Today they are at war. All because NATO made a fake promise. Who pays for that mistake? Definitely not Europe. Let me take you back to 2014. The Euromaidan protests erupted in Ukraine. What was that protest for? A European Union membership for closer ties with Europe. That's what the people of Ukraine protested for. More than 100 Ukrainians died in those protests. What more does Brussels want? The fact is, Europe was never serious about Ukraine. They used Kiev to poke Vladimir Putin. In fact, they're still doing it. Only one big decision was taken by the EU leaders on Thursday. Do you know what the decision was? More military aid.
Europe is doubling military assistance to Ukraine and the message is clear. You keep fighting. Meanwhile, we will lounge around in the Palace of Versailles. Just think about it. The West wants to keep Ukraine in this limbo. Will they offer membership? No, they won't. Will they let Ukraine be neutral and not join NATO? No, they won't. What does that tell you? Ukraine was just a fun political experiment and Europe is one of those typical characters you see in movies. The guy who keeps urging everyone to fight, but when the fighting actually breaks out, he scoots. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.